Hi, this is Judith Karakson, your Manos Berlakis, and this is case 169 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case describing a complex and complicated treatment of a saphenous vein graft aneurysm by recanalizing the corresponding native coronary artery. The patient was an elderly man who had previous coronary bypass and he was found to have a vein graft aneurysm in the graft of the right coronary artery that was growing in size and measured nearly 5 centimeters. This is the diagnostic coronary angiogram that shows a CTO of the proximal right coronary artery with a small branch coming at the tip. The left system was diffusely diseased. There was flow into the circumflex. And then the patient had a vein graft to a diagonal branch that was patent with a good flow and had the vein graft to the right coronary artery that was poorly visualized because the contrast was entering into this large cavity of the aneurysm. And this is a simultaneous injection showing the spatial relationship of the vein graft to the right coronary artery that is aneurysmal as well as the vein graft going to the diagonal branch. And this is the coronary CTA demonstrating the saphenous vein graft aneurysm of the vein graft to the right coronary artery. There was a lot of discussion and planning and the eventual decision was to try to recanalize the native right coronary artery CTO followed by occlusion of the saphenous vein graft that had the aneurysm. The proximal RCA has a blunt proximal cap with a small side branch. The length of the occlusion was long. The distal vessel uh, was poorly visualized, although by CTA it seemed to be of good size. And then it was filling through the vein graft to the right coronary artery. So given the characteristics of the right coronary artery CTO, the plan was to start going retrograde from the vein graft. If it didn't work, then try undergrade direction. Fortunately, the graft was easily crossed with a standard workhorse um, uh, wire. This is a Samurai RC wire that uh, went uh, through the SVG all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We were able to deliver a guide extension, 6 French telescope, along with an intravascular ultrasound. And these are the images from the intravascular ultrasound. This is the distal native vessel. And then we come more proximal entering into the saphenous vein graft, which here is not very large, one, two, three, about four millimeters in diameter. But as we move up, there is this large aneurysm with a ivus catheter, essentially swimming within the aneurysm. And this is the more proximal segment of the aneurysm, which is also quite large. So we're able to advance the guide extension through the SVG aneurysm and perform an injection. And now we can visualize a little better the distal vessel, which is of good size with a large uh, right posterior lateral vessel. We did multiple attempts to pass a guide wire retrograde from the saphenous vein graft into the distal right coronary artery going towards the proximal side, but we were unable to do that. And that's why we then tried undergrade crossing we did have a lot of difficulty advancing a guide wire under grade. We used multiple guide wires, including Filter XTA, Mongo, Dianex Third, without uh, being able to cross. But eventually, we were able to knuckle a guide wire and advance it towards the mid right coronary artery using support by an 8 friends guide extension. This is an IVUS within uh, that um, knuckled guide wire, showing that we're in the subintimal position. And then we had a lot of difficulty advancing further down, which is why we decided to go and try retrograde again. Uh, we tried a Sasuki dual lumen microcatheter that was advanced to the distal right coronary artery. And eventually, as can be seen here, we were able to advance a Sion Black Guide Wire retrograde towards the distal to mid right coronary artery. We were then able to advance a Turnpike LP microcatheter over the Sion Black into the distal right coronary artery. So that now provides us much better chance for being able to cross retrograde. 
We did have a lot of resistance to advancing guide wires. We eventually did a Carlino, which is injection of a small amount of contrast through the microcatheter that was wedged within the plaque. And then used again a polymer jacketed guide wire alternating with a Gaia second, and that seems to advance along the course of the right coronary artery. Um, we did have, however, difficulty advancing equipment and we eventually lost everything. So we had to start again, re-engaging the vein graft and then advancing guide wires uh, retrograde. Uh, once again, dual microcatheter, dual loom microcatheter along with the C on black. And then again, now we have the microcatheter to the mid-right coronary artery. And we're trying to make the two wires, the undergrade and the retrograde, get into the same spot. We eventually advanced an undergrade balloon and did a guide extension assisted reverse cart with 3.0, 3.5, and 4.0 millimeter balloons. Connecting the space was challenging, but eventually we were able to cross into the um, undergrade guide catheter. And this is a moment where the retrograde wire were withdrawing the undergrade balloon, and then as we're withdrawing, we're advancing the retrograde Gaia guide wire, and that eventually finds its way into the undergrade guide catheter. Ivus was very challenging to deliver, so it was only in the mid part of the right coronary artery. And then we predilated the lesion, which dilated well, and placed the two drag eluting stents, 3.5 and 4.0 millimeter in diameter. But then, as we were finalizing the placement of the stand, we realized that there was a perforation of the mid-right coronary artery. And perforations in bypass patients can be a lethal phenomenon because they can lead to localized tamponade. So we uh, inflated, uh, uh, we deployed the stand, and then we inflated uh, the undergrade balloon. But then, as we were trying to withdraw the balloon, we withdrew it a little too early, so we had fracture of portion of the balloon that remained within the proximal right coronary artery, while we still had not achieved hemostasis of the site of the perforation. But fortunately here, we had retrograde accents through a saphenous vein graft, so we were able to use that to insert balloons and then to actually um, deliver a cover stand. It was a 4 by 26 PK papyrus um, stand that did not go by the 4.0 by 20 eventually went and was deployed retrograde into the right, native right coronary artery. And then fortunately we were able to retrieve the fragment of the balloon from the proximal right coronary artery by using a guide extension and withdrawing everything back. Unfortunately we still have bleeding through the coronary artery and uh, we ended up using another covered stand, 4.5 by 20 millimeters, that eventually achieved hemostasis. Still the perforation. The patient did remain hemodynamical stable through this. And then we finally finished by placing an additional drag eluting stand to the proximal right coronary artery. There was some disease distally, so we placed another one drag, drag eluting stand distally. We did have uh, difficulty with uh, removing the retrograde gear, but eventually we were successful advancing both an undergrade and a retrograde microcatheter. Difficulties again, lost the position, we had to rewire undergrade, and then um, we inflated a balloon in the saphenous vein graft to ensure that we had good flow, and that was indeed the case, good undergrade flow through the native right coronary artery. So we placed the stand distally, and then uh, we still had a, a lot of competitive flow. We then proceeded with delivering a 10 millimeter amplager vascular plug through a seven French telescope guide extension. Here it is. And then that uh, was unsheathed, essentially deploying the amplager vascular plug into the proximal portion of the aneurysmal saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery and that led to successful occlusion of the aneurysmal saphenous vein graft. And this was the final result. We do have a good flow through the native right coronary artery. There is some retrograde flow into the aneurysmal SVG, 
but there's also good undergrade flow to the distal right coronary artery. The patient did well overnight, but the following day he had an episode of hypotension and he was found to have a significant pleural effusion by ultrasound that was drained with a chest tube. He received two units of red blood cells and then had a CT that showed no remaining hemothorax. He had subsequent removal of the chest tube, his ejection fraction was normal, and he was discharged on postoperative day 11. So this case provides several important lessons for treating patients who have saphenous vein graft aneurysms. One of them is that one option for treating the aneurysm is to recanalize the native coronary artery and then occlude the aneurysmal vein graft. But as shown in this case, this is not always a simple task. There are many complexities, including severe calcification, risk of complications such as perforations that happen in this particular case. So although this is an option, it should be taken undertaken with care because it does carry certain risks. Second, about the mechanism of perforation, it is hard to know exactly why the vessel perforated. It was heavily calcified, which likely contributed. It is unclear whether one of the knuckles, either the undergrade or the retrograde, went through a side branch and potentially caused rupture. But once the perforation happened, then it was important to achieve hemostasis. We did have the challenge of balloon fracture right in the middle of treating the perforation. So it is important to not pull the balloons back until after they are completely deflated, which can take some time, especially for large balloons. Fourth lesson is about the risk of um, perforation in bypass patients. It can cause loculated pericardial effusion. It can cause pleural effusions, as in this particular patient. So there is still a risk of perforation, and perforation can potentially be lethal, so it's important to treat it as quickly as possible. And the fifth lesson has to do with the management of coronary perforation. In this case, we had the challenge of a balloon fracture in the proximal part of the vessel that did not allow undergrade delivery of equipment. But being retrograde through a saphenous vein graft, we were able to deliver retrogradely balloons for occlusion as well as a covered stand for sealing the perforation site. Thank you.